Coupled mode theory and devices. Coupled mode theory is a very deep and detailed field of electromagnetics. And so I'm just not going to get into all of that here. Instead, what I'm gonna do is just give you a feel of what it is and why it's useful. So we'll talk at a very high level about coupled mode theory and just very briefly mention some applications. I wanna to tie together transmission line and waveguides and how coupled mode of theory can apply to that. Let's get into coupled mode theory. Coupled mode theory really can apply to any time we have two different electromagnetic modes in close proximity and mode can mean a lot of different things. I think the simplest context is if we have two waveguides or two transmission lines in close proximity. So here we see a signal traveling from lower left to upper right. As the second line gets closer in proximity, at some point that those two lines become electromagnetically coupled and the wave from the first line starts spilling over and coupling into the second line. There's a rule of thumb in microwave engineering, keep your lines about three line widths away. And that's pretty consistent here. You'll see when it's about three line widths away, that wave starts coupling from one line into the other and the power will just bounce back and forth. And if the two things are identical, losses are low, you'll get 100% transfer of power over to the second line and then back again, it'll swap back and forth. Asymmetries and losses and other things can prevent 100% power transfer. But that's coupled mode theory. Now it doesn't have to be two waveguides. It can be an external wave and a waveguide. Two external waves, two waveguides. Anytime there's sort of two electromagnetic modes, it's always possible to get those coupled when they're in close proximity so that they can exchange power periodically. Skipping a whole lot of math, which by the way is very good to go through, but the answer in the end, we end up with two equations that describes the power transfer. So at when Z is zero, Z is zero at the very beginning here, well, this sine squared ends up being zero, this sine squared ends up being zero, and we just have 100% of the power in the first line. But what you can see through these sine squared functions is that slowly the power will transfer from one waveguide into the next or one transmission line into the next. And so this is described here with two different parameters. Sometimes they're given slightly different names, but F is the maximum coupling efficiency. So if we have 100% coupling efficiency, sort of like we're showing on the left here, F would be one. And if there's losses, asymmetries or other things, that will be less than one. This kappa term is the coupling coefficient. And I'll define that in a little more detail on the next slide, but suffice to say that defines how quickly the signal will couple from one line over to the other. So the closer those lines are, the larger this kappa will be. So let's look a little bit more in this kappa. If I calculate pi over two kappa, this calculates a very special length. And that's the length over which you get maximum power transfer from one line to the other. So at the lower left here, we're launching 100% of our power into this first waveguide or transmission line. And because these lines are close, the power couples from one over to the other. But at some point there's 100% power over in the second line, or even if it's not 100%, there's some maximum that it hits here. And so that length from the beginning to the maximum power in the second guide, that's the coupling length, also sometimes called the beat length. Let's quickly go through some applications and I'll show you some pictures I found online of people using coupled mode theory to do useful things. Well, the most straightforward one is something called a coupled line filter. So I mentioned the coupling strength has to do with the proximity between the lines. But you can imagine as you go to a lower frequency that that mode becomes a little bit larger and it can couple more strongly. So that coupling is also frequency dependent. And that's really the key behind these coupled line filters. Also that coupling length becomes frequency dependent since the coupling strength is frequency dependent. 
So you can imagine here, we're at the, the upper left, and we got a signal coming in. It's traveling down this, this small line here, and it's slowly coupling over. So there's some frequency that will probably get 100% power transfer over to this second line, and the rest, not so much. And so we're looking at a bandpass filter here. Then you can see how the, the width of the lines, the spacing between the lines are being adjusted a little bit, and that's really tuning the filter shape, if you will. Uh, over in the upper right, here's another common form. You'll see these coupled line filters, and it's a little bit more compact. So if you look at the one on the left, it's kind of walks from the upper left to the lower right. Uh, if you put your lines at a diagonal, well, it's a little bit more compact and looks more straight to our eyes, but also we're tuning the distance between these lines and that's controlling the filter response. And even here, you have a little bit of a mock zender thing going on here where the signal splits. There's different things that happen in each arms and then it also combines out of phase to produce even more filtering options. And here's another way to make these coupled line filters a little bit more compact. We can kind of meander up and down so that overall we're essentially traveling left to right, but it's also tuning the, the gap distances and that's shaping the filter response. Splitters. So we can have a, a signal coming in here. It will split and it will come out this port. Um, Here's another type of splitter. Notice now we're engineering the gap with some kind of grading, and that could be done to enhance the directional coupling from one line to the other. Sometimes it gets very hard if you want strong coupling to make that gap very small just due to manufacturing constraints. Little fluctuations in manufacturing could short the lines, and so additional structures can sometimes strengthen that coupling. And here's something called a hybrid coupler. There's a whole bunch of stuff I could say with these, but essentially it comes in, it's a splitter, but it will also do phase shifting. And I'm not gonna talk about it here, but look up a Butler matrix. And what you can do is have a network of these and you can do discrete Fourier transforms with these hybrid couplers. So lots and lots of applications for this and beam forming and other things, but at its core, it's a directional coupler using coupled mode theory.